In this video, I'll share with you the skills that you need to have to become a back-end Python developer. I'm taking these skills from my knowledge, as well as doing some research and looking at some recent job postings relating to Python positions. So with that said, let's get into the video after a quick word from our sponsor. Before we get started, I need to thank Linode for sponsoring this video. I've been using and working with Linode for nearly three years now, and they've consistently been my go-to choice for hosting my applications and servers. In fact, right now I'm using Linode to host the official Tech with Tim Discord bot, a website, multiple of my domains, and a Kubernetes cluster. Now, Linode was just recently acquired by Akamai, and as a part of this acquisition, they're going to be adding more than a dozen new data centers around the world in the next year. Linode makes it super easy to spin up servers with their one-click app marketplace and have tons of written guides and YouTube videos on their channel to help you get started. Now, if you're having any issues, you can reach out to their 24-7 support team and actually talk with a real human being. Now, Linode's pricing is simple with no hidden fees and full transparency, and you can test out Linode services for free by using the link in the description and claiming an $100 60-day credit for any new accounts. It's been an absolute pleasure to work with Linode over the past few years, and one last thank you to them for sponsoring this video. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in. Now, I quickly want to mention, if you haven't already heard, I just released a brand new course. It's called Blockchain Expert. If you're looking to get into Web3, learn about blockchain technologies, solidity, Web3 fundamentals, etc., then check it out from the link in the description. I know you guys will find some value. But that said, though, let's get into these skills. Now, obviously, you can land a Python developer position without having everything on this list. But I think if you want it to be considered for kind of a, like, let's say mid-level or maybe even a higher level position, you would need to have everything here. That said, I'm sure you could join as kind of a junior Python developer or a junior backend developer and work your way up and learn some of the missing skills if you didn't have all of it. So the first thing you're going to have to have here pretty obvious is Python skills. You need to understand Python fundamentals. I don't think you need to be an expert in Python. You don't have to know everything about like generators, uh, iterators, uh, meta classes, all of that kind of advanced syntax. But I would know for loops, functions, classes, objects, and a lot of the common and core syntax and functionality that you'd use on an everyday basis. Okay, so moving on to the second skill you would need to have to become a back-end Python developer. This may seem a little counterintuitive, but this is some basic front-end skills. Now, whenever you're working on the back-end, you're still going to be touching aspects of the front-end. Even if you're not writing front-end code, you might have to understand it, digest it, kind of look at it and read it. And for that reason, you should understand some basic HTML, basic CSS. You should understand maybe a little bit of JavaScript. Again, you don't need to be an expert or a master in this, but you need to have some fluency and the ability to at least read some of that code. So I would spend a bit of time, maybe a week or two, kind of looking into some of those skills, learning how to build some basic front ends. Maybe you want to dabble in something like React, Vue, Angular, some other popular frameworks. That's up to you, but I would know some basic front end skills. Now, beyond that knowledge, the next thing that you would need to know to become a back end Python developer is some basic networking skills. Now, I think you could probably get away without having this, but I would highly recommend spending a few days learning about basic networking. So learning about HTTP. What is that protocol? How does that work? How do you serve data over the web? Learning about IP addresses learning about, say, firewalls, learning about VPNs, and just, again, kind of fundamental things related to networking. Maybe you want to learn why localhost works the way it does, about different ports, about, you know, kind of standard ports you'd have for a website versus ports for other services. Again, just some fundamental knowledge in this area I think will go a long way. So I would learn about basic networking. Now, moving beyond networking, the next thing I would learn is related to Linux. And also, I'll clarify here, I wouldn't learn these necessarily in any particular order. I think the order I have is actually decent, but just throwing it out there, you can kind of learn this in any order. So let me take that back. The next thing, just something I would learn would be Linux. Now, you want to learn about how to operate in a Linux environment. So what different Linux users are, Linux permissions, Linux commands, how do you copy, paste, move files around? You want to be comfortable working on just strictly the command line and not relying on a graphical user interface. Now, I actually have an entire Linux tutorial series that's designed specifically for programmers looking to kind of learn this basic knowledge. So I'll link that in the description in case you're curious. It is completely free. 
So next, after learning Linux, I would start learning Django and Flask, which are web frameworks that utilize Python. Now, these are great to learn regardless if you want to be a Python backend developer. But I think if you want to be a backend developer, you're going to have to be competent with these frameworks and learn more than just the basics. You want to learn kind of the intermediate and advanced topics within this and be very comfortable writing code in Django and Flask. Now, Flask is the more basic of these two frameworks. So I would start by learning that, understand how to create a website with it, how to create an API with it, how to do security, authentication, logging in, logging out. You may even want to look at WebSockets using Flask. That could be a cool project. Next, though, you want to get into Django. Now, Django is a lot more complicated. It has many more tools and features, but it's used by large companies like Instagram, Spotify, Mozilla, National Geographic, and a bunch of other ones as well. So just learning Django will open you up to a lot of job opportunities. But again, you want to be learning about authentication, page routing, how to do APIs, more advanced features, Django extensions, databases, specifically databases and learning the kind of database model within Django. That's a bit complicated, but something you definitely need to learn if you want to be a back end Python developer. Now, beyond Django, the next thing that I would start looking into is API design and just APIs in general, learning about kind of how those work, the different routes you can set up, CRUD APIs, more complex APIs, and specifically related to kind of permissions and authentications around that. Personally, I always find that the most complicated stuff is doing authentication, specifically token authentication or other aspects of authentication where you have a refresh token, an expiry date. You have maybe username password authentication. There's a lot of different ways to do this, and it's going to change depending on the framework that you're using. So I would be really, really comfortable creating APIs, designing APIs, working with frameworks like Django and Flask, maybe even Fast API, and just be comfortable doing this. Almost know how to do it kind of off the top of your head to spin up a quick API, add some authorization or authentication, understand what JWT tokens are, and all the other stuff that you're going to be using frequently if you're a backend developer. Now, beyond that, I would also look at stuff like rate limiting, how you host your APIs, how you make sure your APIs are secure and not being hit by too many people. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff to look at in this, and I'm no expert in this field, but those are some of the things I would start really kind of researching if I was thinking about becoming a more full time Python backend developer. So next we move on to probably my least favorite topic, but this is databases. Now, the reality is, if you want to be a back end developer of any kind, you have to understand databases. This is a very, very important part of your job and you need to know how to create databases, delete them, migrate them, do maintenance on them, add new tables, add relationships, do database design, how to host databases, how to protect and secure your databases. There is so much stuff relating to data, how to back up your databases, how to part put part of your database in another database and access it from somewhere else. There is so much stuff related to this, and that's going to come with learning SQL. Now, there's a lot of companies now that are using NoSQL databases. For example, my startup Velocity uses a NoSQL database, which is Firebase. However, um, you know, it's probably a good idea to understand SQL. And I myself took, I think, two SQL courses in university. Sorry for the cut there. You can see my cat behind me and was about to be stopping my recording. So I had to step in there and fix that. But as I was saying, you need to learn SQL. You need to understand how to structure databases, create them, query them, run SQL commands. And I would also be familiar with NoSQL databases and understand a little bit about how to structure your data in a NoSQL database, because that's different than working with a SQL database. With a NoSQL database, you're fairly limited in terms of query operations due to the limited structure that's imposed. So the way you structure your data is much different and you end up having a lot of redundant data. That's actually kind of part of the design process of working with a NoSQL database. Anyways, look into that. You're going to have to understand SQL. I would kind of focus there and then maybe just learn a bit about NoSQL to kind of have some experience with that in case a job required. That. So last thing on my list here is something that really should be its own job. And with a lot of companies, it is. However, if you're working maybe for a smaller company or I don't know, some companies just require this, you have to have DevOps skills. Now, this really means your experience working with the cloud. You understand how to deploy, how to host specific things, how to go in there and maybe change something, do some maintenance. Uh, you should have experience working in a cloud environment like AWS. Azure, Google Cloud, um, whatever it is this company uses, usually they require some experience in that specific environment. Now, again, I really feel like this is its own job. There is so much stuff to learn related to DevOps. And I mean, this could be a whole video on its own, how to be a DevOps engineer, which I'm not even really qualified to talk about. 
The reality is that a lot of companies are requiring this, right? So I think having a little bit of experience with this, being able to not look like you don't have any experience is probably what you're going for in this category. So yeah, learn a little bit of DevOps. Now, I will lastly mention, you also, of course, want to learn Git version control GitHub. I think that goes without saying, so I didn't really mention it too explicitly, but I would definitely learn that. Uh, and that's pretty much a requirement for any programming job. So that's it, guys. I'm going to start wrapping it up here. Make sure to check out Blockchain Expert from the link in the description if you're interested in Web3 or blockchain technologies and you want to become a blockchain engineer. With that said, I will see you in another YouTube video. Thank you.